You've been disappearing wrong. Most people think disappearing from the internet starts with deleting accounts, scrubbing old posts, or switching on a VPN. But the real danger is in the data you didn't know was being collected in the first place. In 2026, you might think you only have one identity, but you actually have two. The identity you think you control and the identity that's being built behind your back. Your digital shadow is 10 to 50 times larger than the footprint you created intentionally. It includes where you go, who you talk to, the devices you use, when you wake up, what you buy, and the thousands of micro signals your technology leaks every single day. And here's the part no one tells you. Your digital shadow regenerates even after you delete everything. That's why disappearing in 2026 is so difficult because the entire system was designed to make sure you can't. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you exactly how your identity gets reconstructed after deletion, where 95% of your data actually leaks from, why VPNs in incognito mode barely make a dent, how data brokers rebuild the version of you that you thought you erased, and what actually works in 2026, and what's a total waste of time. If you want the beginner's toolkit that matches everything I'm talking about, the one with the step-by-step -step starter actions, it's linked below. By the end of this, you won't just understand how the modern internet tracks you, you'll understand exactly how to break its ability to follow you. What's the first thing you must fix if you want to disappear? You can't disappear when the internet is held together by five little breadcrumbs you've been dropping since middle school. If you want to vanish in 2026, you start with your identifiers. These are the anchors that hold your entire digital life together, and most people don't even realize they've been using the same ones for over a decade. Your email, your phone number, the card you use to buy anything, the device you carry everywhere, and the browser you use for everything, from grocery lists to Googling. These five pillars define your online identity, and once you understand that, disappearing becomes a lot less mystical and a lot more mechanical. The fix is simple. Stop using the same identifiers for everything. Start with your email. Companies track you across apps, stores, and platforms because you keep giving them the same address. The easiest upgrade is email aliasing. You can use simple login, Proton aliases, or Fastmail aliases. Use a different email for every service. Every login then becomes its own identity thread. Your phone number is even more powerful than your email, which also makes it the most dangerous thing to reuse. Swap real SIM signups for virtual numbers like MySudo, Hush, or Burner. This single change cuts more linkage than any VPN ever will. Then there's payments. When every purchase ties back to the same debit card, you build a perfect behavioral timeline. Virtual cards like Privacy.com, Wise, or Revolut's single-use cards break that chain for online purchases. And wherever you can, pay with cash. Next is your device. It's the loudest snitch in your life. When every part of your life flows through one physical device, cross-contamination is unavoidable. So split your identities. Use separate devices or at least separate user profiles. Have one for personal life, one for sensitive research, and one for private browsing. Finally, your browser is not a catch-all bucket. Use privacy browsers and isolate browser profiles. That means stuff like Firefox containers, Brave profiles, or the DuckDuckGo browser, although that one's not the best. Each identity gets its own isolated space. Once you break these anchors, the entire identity graph around you starts to collapse. Because suddenly, nothing links together anymore. But that raises the next question. If you break the anchors that define your identity, how does the system still manage to glue you back together? How do companies rebuild you even after you delete everything? Breaking your identifiers feels like freedom until you realize the internet still knows who you are anyway. Deleting accounts doesn't stop your identity from being reconstructed. And here's what catches beginners off guard. It comes from everyone and everything around you. Your phone number lives inside hundreds of contact lists you've never seen. When someone else syncs their contacts, it recreates part of your profile behind your back. Data brokers buy these scraps merge them with old addresses, past purchases, leaked credentials, and your location trails, and they rebuild a version of you that you thought you left behind. Shadow profiles get created even if you don't have accounts. Apps leak your habits to third-party trackers, and browser fingerprinting identifies your device based on thousands of tiny signals, like your typing cadence, your screen resolution, your audio drivers, sensor readings, and the timing of your clicks. Even if you change your email and your number, your micro actions can give you away. And all of this happens automatically, but reconstruction isn't magic. It depends on one simple weakness, 
your fragments that still connect. Maybe you switched emails but kept the same device. Maybe you created a new identity but logged into an old account just to check something. Maybe you even used a VPN but kept using the same browser profile you've used for years. The reconstruction engine thrives on these overlaps. Breaking this means compartmentalization, not completely deleting yourself, but giving every part of your life its own container, like its own email, number, device, or profile, even browsers, and its own boundaries. That's how you become unmergeable. If you're realizing, oh, I've been using the same email and phone number for 10 years, the toolkit I made for beginners walks you through fixing that. It's simple and free below. If reconstruction depends on fragments, what exactly is feeding all those fragments into the system? And what's creating the shadow version of you that keeps regenerating? What data is being collected about you without your permission? Your digital shadow isn't built from the post you make yourself. It's built from the parts of your life you never meant to reveal. This is the part most people never see. Your shadow is the exhaust your technology produces every second you're near it. Every app you install sends telemetry home. How often you open it, what you tap, how long you stay, which screens you linger on. Your phone logs constant location pings even when you think tracking is off. Your purchases create little timestamps that reveal your habits. And metadata shows your routines more clearly than your messages do. Your accelerometer records how fast you move, your gyroscope knows how you walk, your battery patterns, app refresh intervals, and background network activity all feed the system. Your shadow also includes every data breach you've ever been in. Once your data leaks, it rarely disappears. It gets passed around, merged, repackaged, and reintroduced into the data ecosystem. And then there's ad tech, the invisible network that connects your apps and websites to companies you've never even heard of. They trade your behavior, interests, attention, and your routines like currency. So how do you shrink a shadow this big? You starve it. You limit data at the source. So limit permissions, create fewer accounts, delete the ones you don't use, stop giving every app the same email and phone number, and use fewer apps overall. And when possible, choose privacy-respecting services, things like Signal, Proton, or Bitwarden. Every time you reduce the data flow, your shadow shrinks. Every boundary you set removes the fuel from the reconstruction engines. But there's one source of data you can't ignore. It's the part that leaks even when you're not actively using your device. So if your shadow is this powerful, what happens when your devices are broadcasting information about you all day long? How much are your devices snitching on you even when you're not using them? Most people don't realize this, but your devices leak more information about you than your social media ever will, even when they're sitting face down on a table. Every modern phone, laptop, and tablet is basically a sensor hub. They collect location data, even in airplane mode, and send it all back once you turn it off. They record motion, proximity, Bluetooth signals, Wi-Fi probes, battery cycles, and silent background telemetry. And all of this gets logged, because this is how the operating system is built. Android sends bursts of telemetry through the day, even when it's idle. Windows sends diagnostic data through the channels you can't fully turn off. Apps you forgot you downloaded still phone home with usage details and device info. Even the accelerometer that measures your steps leaks identifiable patterns that can match back to you. So what can you actually do to stop this? You reduce how much data your devices can produce in the first place. The device you choose matters. If you want the cleanest baseline, use a privacy forward system, something like a de-googled phone running Graphene OS or at least an iPhone with extremely strict permissions. Not because they're perfect, but because they limit background chatter. Then treat your apps like potential liabilities. Install fewer of them. Only use what you need and turn off radios you don't use. Restrict permissions that aren't necessary. And most importantly, don't use one device for every aspect of your life. If everything flows through one physical object, your entire identity becomes easy to connect. Quieting your devices helps shrink the constant stream of data that fuels your shadow. And once you cut all that noise, you're ready for the real question. Who is collecting all of this data and turning it into the version of you that keeps following you everywhere? If you've ever felt like the internet knows too much about you, you're not imagining it. And the reason is data brokers. Data brokers are the hidden marketplace of human behavior. They buy, merge, repackage, and sell data on you at a scale that feels unreal. They don't just keep a file on you, they keep dozens. Each file is tens of thousands of data points deep, like where you shop, live, drive, what time you scroll at night, how many steps you take, 
which neighborhoods you pass through, even what you read at 2 a.m. And yes, they track your location patterns too. They rebuild the version of you that you thought you erased when you deleted your accounts. And they connect new emails to old ones. They merge virtual phone numbers with previous SIM cards. And they match your purchases across different payment methods. They even use IP logs to buy fingerprints and timing patterns to pull every fragment back into place. So how do you fight that? You have to weaken the foundations of their profiles. Data broker databases fall apart when your identifiers stop appearing in new places. Services like Delete Me, which is what I personally use, help remove old records, the ones that keep getting bought and sold. Freezing your credit cuts off credit header data, one of the biggest sources that brokers rely on. And using alias emails and virtual numbers prevents new identities from connecting back to the old ones. Virtual cards break the purchase trails that normally tie everything together. This breaks the consistency of the data they use to track you. But there's still one more layer, and it's the one people underestimate the most. How does the internet recognize you even when you change everything? Even if you replace your email, your phone number, your device, your browser, and your payment methods, the internet can still recognize you. And it does this through behavioral fingerprinting. Behavioral fingerprinting is the final boss of modern tracking. It identifies you based on how you move through the digital world, the tiny patterns you don't even notice you make. That could be your typing rhythm, scrolling speed, mouse hesitation, purchase timing, login schedule, and accelerometer-based movement signature. You don't consciously control these patterns, but your devices and apps definitely see them, while your browser tracks them. And the models trained on billions of data points definitely see them. This is why disappearing is about breaking recognizable patterns, not hiding away forever. You just can't let every part of your life blend into one behavioral profile. So separate your activities across different devices or profiles. Don't log into all your accounts at the same time every day, and don't use the same browser for every part of your life. And avoid carrying one phone that holds every identity you've ever created. So think in compartments, behave in compartments, and keep your rhythms from collapsing into one unified signature. Once you understand how behavior can reconnect everything, one question becomes obvious. What's the mistake that blows your disappearance instantly? Most people fail because they accidentally reconnect everything themselves. Cross-contamination is the silent killer of disappearing. It's the moment two parts of your life, the parts that were supposed to stay separate, touch for half a second. And that's all it takes. You sign up with the wrong email just this once. You log into an old account because you needed a photo from there. You reuse a phone number because it was convenient. And you check something sensitive using the same browser you use for work. You buy something with the wrong card because autofill popped up. Or you connect to a Wi-Fi network you used before under a different identity. Or you keep using one device for everything because it's the one in your hand. And instantly, every wall you built starts cracking because the pieces of your identity that were supposed to branch away from each other landed on the same surface again. It's one overlap, and that's all the system needs to start stitching you back together. This is why disappearing requires something simple but rare, discipline. You keep identities, emails, numbers, and devices separate because connection is the mechanism the system uses to follow you. The people who successfully vanish don't disappear by hiding, but they never let the dots reconnect. And once you see that clearly, disappearing stops feeling like paranoia and more like freedom. You're not avoiding the internet anymore, but you're avoiding the architecture designed to recognize you. Which leads us to the final question. If you've broken the identifiers, starved the shadow, quieted your devices, collapsed the broker profiles, and avoided cross-contamination, what does disappearing actually mean in 2026? Here's the part almost no one expects. Disappearing isn't about erasing yourself. It's about becoming unrecognizable to the systems watching you. You vanish by breaking the pattern the modern internet expects from you, not deleting everything. This is what it means to disappear in 2026, breaking the map that the internet uses to understand who you are. Once the map collapses, the tracking collapses too. And once the tracking collapses, the profiling collapses. And once the profiling collapses, the you that companies sell, trade, and reconstruct dissolves. If you want to start taking real action and not just learn the theory, grab the Beginner's Privacy Action Toolkit in the description. It has the first steps, the quick start plan, and the settings that make the biggest impact. Don't think this is running away from the world. You're choosing the version of yourself that gets to exist inside of it.